Um, Cross-curricular learning. What do you want me to do? Say a word. Experimental. So I just come out with what first comes into my head. To me, it's about... Talking to staff. Hands-on. Increasingly on the agenda. Real-world learning. The whole school working together. History to science. The future of education. Break from the norm. Mm, dangerous. Also enjoyable. Communicating. Even if I don't end up with a speaking part, at least I'll be the guy holding the card. Science back to farming. Using different departments for the same project. For the students to be able to pick up skills and knowledge in one area of the curriculum. Kind of refreshes your teaching a bit. Very exciting. Farming back to history. And to be able to transfer that in some other aspect of the curriculum. That's what we want them to be able to do when they leave. Absolutely. Um, I don't think so. Yes, they should. What a good question. Is it worth assessing? Um, I might be alone in that. Well, Do you mean assess the actual work that they do? Yes, if you can do it effectively. It may be that the teacher hasn't got the knowledge in all the curriculum areas to be able to make a full and, and honest assessment. How do we get to the end of a project and prove how much they've learnt. The two areas um, cross-curricular I'm really involved in are science and then performing arts or dance in particular. Uh, currently I've got a maths department coming over here. They're actually taking weights and measurements and the assessment will be after the end of that exercise have they got a graph at the end of it? What I've had a go at doing is uh, getting the students to actually come up with their own kind of mitosis or cell division dance. We could absolutely say that their behaviour was better. Sometimes it's difficult enough to sort of level your own subjects. Yeah, yeah, it can be assessment work, but it's not always. They were motivated, they were inspired, their use of imagination was fantastic. I don't feel that it's necessary to sit there with a tick box going up, the that, the that, 70%. A, a, well done. Their movement together as a group shows me that I can assess their understanding of that. It might be more that it has to be a team effort in assessing cross-curricular work, I would say. Um, Christmas Carol. Oh, there's loads that we're doing, absolutely loads. The most obscure one we've done is with PE so far. Last year the school ran a very successful forensic day where we murdered our head teacher. Cross-curricular learning or any learning always works best if it's a new experience. Then it does bring people together, but I don't think you have to have it that way. It's totally different to what they're used to. A group of people coming and doing African drumming with a whole year group. Do do that question again? I think you can start just from, from nothing really. We can't assume these days in a very multicultural and mixed community that students, young people, do have the same experiences. They'll probably never bump into a lamb ever again. Some su subjects gel together quite naturally. So using drama for history. A lot of data about um, populations in various African countries. Maths in history. We're going to look at all the flags of all the various African countries and look at the properties of symmetry. And it brings the maths, I think, alive. Um, and science in history isn't something that students that are studying history would usually do. But I think if you're talking about a shared experience to start off with, yes, it's a good idea to start off with, but it's not the be-all and end-all of a successful cross-curricular lesson. Um, I don't think it has to be a brand new experience every time. I keep on saying be-all and end-all. By putting that experience on for everyone, then they've got that experience to draw on. So I think it can be very, very valuable, yes. It is the future of education. Videos. Lots of projectors. It's all uh, technical to me, you know, running this and... Podcasts. Different ways of showing things. And finding that and searching for the other and things like that. I personally don't. Uh, I'm not very ICT savvy. Being the ICT across the curriculum coordinator, I should have a very good answer for this. Can you say the question again, please? I think it's easy to fall into the trap of using ICT too frequently as a cross-curricular device. I play the Africa card. Um, I'm from the third world, uh, we don't have computers. <laughs> we go on their system, they load it up and then we can look at the work that they've done in a different subject and other students start going, oh yeah, we're doing that now or we've done that and you know, it just triggers memory off because instead of being my example and my teaching, we're looking at other people's work. ICT naturally can go into many different subjects. Especially in evaluating what you've done, the ICT for cross-curricular activities is useful. 
if students are leaving school without the skills in ICT, I think we're putting them at a huge disadvantage for the future when they leave school. That's my smiley face, by the way. If you're going to run a cross-curricular activity. It's important to establish at first what the students already know. I think it's vital. I've had a list of things that they've already done because you could go to say a year eight class and say right we're going to do animations and they hadn't learnt that skill in ICT. You would always need to start I think with finding out their knowledge in one area and then finding out with, with their knowledge in the other area before you try and link them together. You've got the levels that you can use they can come in with. Bringing things from from Spain or Spanish speaking countries whether it be the history, geography, all of those different areas, it's very important to bring into the Spanish lesson. And also in lessons you can actually talk to them about, well, okay, what, what are you doing in maths at the moment, or how good are you in maths? It, it makes the language you know, something that exists outside of the four walls that they learn it in. So it's quite good to coordinate with all the departments and work out exactly where they are with everything. Knowing their academic abilities, knowing their learning demons. Uh, and that really c can inform how you're going to run a cross-curricular activity. So that they've got the skills to be able to do it. But, and also the teacher needs to have the skills to be able to help them if they can't. you will automatically find links. We're counting sheep in French. Strum a guitar and watch the strings vibrate. We've done work with art um, on Native Americans. I don't think there's any rules. English and science. Obviously some subjects go together quite easily, quite naturally. We're planning a project with maths on the number of people who died during World War One. Maths and ICT go together quite nicely. PE and science I think works incredibly well. I, I don't know if you could actually say certain subjects can't be linked together. Um, uh, what a great question. Aye, 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 aye. I don't think there's any subjects that shouldn't be linked together. I think you can find common ground with all different subjects. You need to start off uh, with a small number of subjects first. History and science again. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of science. <laughs> Some of the links might be a little more contrived if the teachers, the staff themselves, don't see or appreciate those links. But I think the challenge is to try and link those areas that don't naturally go together. Um, I, I think um, I am quite unusual being a biologist and a dance teacher at the same time. And I think the less obvious links, for example PE and the food technology links, um, they've just been more fun. Some students may not have a flair for science, but they have a flair for dance. And the kids don't expect it, which is nice. It takes a bit of organisation, but you can do it in just about any topic. It's quite a risky thing to try and link subjects, and as a teacher it's quite challenging uh, to make sure you cover both areas quite well, and you don't try and do cross-curricular, but actually you find out you're just teaching a dance lesson and you've kind of forgotten the science bit. You really need to look at the age for the student, what you're trying to get out of it, what another subject would be trying to get out of it in order to link it with a purpose. Does that answer the question? I think when you're planning a cross-curricular activity, there has to be lots more consultation between you and the other department. What's feasible in your subject, or well, what's feasible in your subject, bring them sort of together. What how can you do, um, what do you need to do? We had to start off by meeting with each other and discussing it first. It's really important to, first of all, formalise in your mind what it is uh, that you're trying to get the students to learn. Are we going to be on the computer, are we going to be outside, what are we going to be doing for this particular task? One of the maths teachers approached me, um, oh I hear you've got lambs, well yes you can hear them, and um, he said, what can we do with them? And I said, well, you can go and weigh them. So we've sort of combined our own interests to start with as a, a starting point. We had a short... Uh, can I rewind on that? Yes, for, for that forensic day, we had three or four meetings of all the teachers together looking at ideas of how to go about things. Don't just try and create a task just because you want two subject areas to fit together. I rely on the staff coming to me saying, this is a seed of an idea, is it worth looking at? Um, usually it works quite well. The, the lamb weighing is an absolute brilliant success. We've got a range of ability, different year groups from year seven to year 10, and they're all having a cracking time doing it. Um, so it does take a lot more planning, but the thing is that you get a lot more people involved in the project, so it does work quite well.
It's important to try and be quite topical. Day of the Dead. A national topic. I'll be sitting on the train going home. How would you choose a topic? Um... It really has to come from the teacher's own experience. And suddenly something, an idea will pop up. I'll just write it down, I'll put it in my mobile and go, right, don't forget. The danger of cross-curricular is trying to teach a subject that you can't teach. I suppose we chose the subjects from the topic rather than the topic from the subjects. As a mathematician, for example, my interests are not just restricted to everything mathematical. For example, I've got a particular interest in music. Any way that you can, you can choose your topic um, that is more relevant to the real world, I think, is uh, important. Day of the Dead, fundamentally, is about making you know, skeletons, etc. So art got involved that way. And then the history of the Day of the Dead seemed to fit in naturally. So that's how we chose the topic. We're all very new to this cross-curricular work, uh, but I think my personal view is it should come from the teacher's own experiences and where they see the connections currently existing much better than a kind of contrived situation. <laughs> for bringing up their enthusiasm and their confidence as well. I'm a great fan of education being exciting. Just to make things a little different. People might say, why bother doing cross-curricular work? It's something different. It breaks up a lesson. It, it feels very exciting. I'm getting a suntan here. Who does this is live? Things get in the way like time and, um, you know, logistics, all those kind of things might get in the way. It can be a little bit of a heartache sometimes because you, you're not quite sure about their subjects, they're not quite sure about your subjects. But to work with other departments has really been quite interesting because we see their teaching approaches and we we can learn from each other. Cross curriculum does make things more relevant. You can link it to how is this used in the real world, how is this used in industry. When it comes to the real world and 99% of jobs that the students are going to do, they're going to be linking their skills all the time and linking skills is a really difficult task for students to do. You know I don't necessarily like to walk into a classroom to see 30 students sitting behind a desk and the teacher doing all the work from the front. Trying to teach something that you don't know. Everything can go wrong with cross-curricular learning. What can go wrong? The whole project can uh, not get off the ground. If it's not well planned, if it's done badly, if it's contrived, it can certainly be counterproductive. One thing you can get is we've already done that. Might be ambitious objectives. I think sometimes the students, depending on the subject, wouldn't see the cross the link at all. With cross-curricular, it's very easy to make mistakes. It is risky. If you're putting a project together and it goes wrong, you've got to be brave enough to put your hands up, to look at it, to talk to the team, to come and talk to the head or the leadership team and said, I've tried this, it hasn't worked. And it could be that you don't know much about their subject, they don't know much about your subject. I think you need to be comfortable in your subject knowledge for both areas uh, that you're teaching about. That's what people perhaps sometimes associate cross-curricular with is trying to get into a zone that you're not comfortable with but it doesn't have to work like that. And then learn something from it, I think that's the key thing. It's all to do with trial and error and it's something, if I say something we do a lot more, someone throw something at me. Having said that, I sit down with the department, take, take the ideas on board and always stay in your own comfort zones with what you're teaching. Where it comes with a clear link and where it comes with the teacher's own enthusiasm, I think it can be a very rich and rewarding experience for them, yeah. The usual preparation still needs to be done, even though it is exciting because it's two subjects together. You still need to be just as prepared, I think. Yeah.